you know, I have to take responsibility. I'm the manager. It's um, it's a bit frustrating because, as I said, four days ago, we were a point off the playoff situation and with a real genuine chance of believing that we were going to put ourselves in that frame. And um, these two results have been, you know, hugely frustrating and disappointing for us. Disgraceful, shambolic, disgusting, embarrassing. I'm not talking about my dinner, folks. I'm talking about Blackburn Rovers as we were battered by Barnsley. That's right, folks, back once again with another match preview. That's right, folks, back once again with another match review. This time we're picking apart the latest upon latest upon latest shambles by Blackburn Rovers. That's right. And we'll get to it in a second. If you're new to the channel, stop what you're doing, swallow what you're chewing, and smash the old subscribe button. You're buying up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, world football related, boys and girls. We got it all here under one. Rufski, that's right. Now, before we jump into the thick of things and we talk about the naughty, disgusting filth, let's talk about the naughty, disgusting, cheeky little buggers out there. The Patreons, that's right. The VIP 10. We're trying to make an 11, a dream team. Can you be that number 11? Will you be that number 11? If you want to be that number 11 or maybe 12 and support the channel in another way, I am looking for Patreons. Always on the look for Patreons and you can support the channel in another way. Check out the description. Links to my other social media platforms. Patreon.com forward slash Roversees. Check it out. Follow. I'm going to be revamping the old Patreon and you could be in line. You could be in line for exclusive exclusivity. Yeah. Just like Russell Frost, Cody Co, Tom Clark, Tom Beresford, the legend, John Spurn, Aztec Marky Mark, no code drinker, Daniel Flippin' Mella, uh, Bianca Mona, of course, LG and Cow, who has returned to support the channel. I like So... Do you deserve a round of applause? Someone else who does deserve a round of applause is Gerhard Struber. That's right. He's doing an absolutely phenomenal, phenomenal job out in uh, out in Oakwell as Barnsley smash dot dash dot humiliated Blackburn Rovers for the second match in a row. That's that's the receipt. The receipt. The Ben Brereton receipt. It's hot property. Give it back to Tony Mowbray and say, oi. Oi, just get rid of him. Get rid of him. Absolutely get rid of him uh, in the end. Uh, yeah. So, yes, shambles, 2-0 defeat uh, by Barnsley. That's right. Uh, two second-half goals really, really sunk it, uh, sunk, sunk the points in there for Barnsley. Um, yeah, uh, before kickoff, if I would have dragged the lovely wife from, from wherever she was, I think she was working, but grabbed her and, and just plonked her into the front of the TV and said to them, said to her, said, Sweetheart, one of these two teams is battling for relegation and one of these teams is battling for playoffs. Which one is it? She wouldn't have a pissing. She would go with Barnsley. She would say, Barnsley are battling for playoffs. The other shitty team, they're, they must be the relegation for No! Oh my goodness, no. It's the other way around. Rovers are the shit team at the moment. And we're supposed to be battling for the top six. Tell that lot that. That's right. All 11 of them. Absolutely clueless. Um, yeah, and Mowbray's even said he's, he's taken one on the chin for the, for the you know, so it's his responsibility. Yes, it flipping is your responsibility. Oh, goodness. Where do we start? Where do we start with that? Of course, I'm not even not even getting into the meat of the matter, and we'll, we'll talk about the red card in a minute. But let's talk about the square pegs in round holes. Those square pegs in round holes was something I used to re uh, reiterate with Lambert, with Owen Coyle. I don't want to be reiterating it with Tony Mowbray, that's right. But he continues to play Elliot Bennett at left back, the most one-sided player in the old football league yeah he's can't got a left foot he wouldn't even know a left foot if it if it, if it's if it stood on him he wouldn't he wouldn't have a clue he, he was so one-dimensional whenever the ball come to him for his left hand side you think i think you know what I, I could probably take it i could probably control it with my left foot um and then i'll, I'll be able to bring it he was so one you know ah, he, he's just it's like a robot it's like and then before you know it up they pop and they can they're, they're ripping ripping us a new one uh, in fact they were ripping us a new one in the first 20 25 minutes they were all over us and they were a little bit unlucky not to not to be in front um but credit for credits do Ro uh, rovers did start to get into the game and unfortunately uh the halftime whistle came at the wrong time because i think we you know another five or ten minutes in the first half we probably would have been one nil up uh dominic sammy had a couple of guilt ed edge chances we had a, a couple of free kicks and a couple of corners uh for the returning mole group that's right oh, aka the skipper fantastic he was back i thought we'd never see him back in a rover shirt uh today he was good for the first 45 the second 45 not too much in fact the second 45 uh, you just want to wipe from your memory completely completely 
absolutely clueless. In fact, you know, the game turned on his head when Struber, the the, the legend, the magician, we should call him, uh, brought hit on his substitutes. They completely changed the game. Uh, and they got their, their noses in front. We start to chase, scramble. We then, Mowbray then went, uh... Where, where have we got? I've got, uh, yeah, let's, let's ah, yeah, yo, yeah, just chuck, he just chuck some shit. Just chuck his substitutions out there, thinking, okay, yeah, one of these, one of these will do it. One of these strikers will do it, uh, and they'll score the goals. No, sir, one of those flipping stri strikers will come in there flying with his foot and get himself sent off. So, no, that's not the answer. You can't just go, bah, and chuck any, sh any shit at it. You know what? <sighs> And that's what he did. He threw all his all his all his uh, all his, all his uh, gifts out from the pram or whatever whatever the expression is. And I was hoping that Breverton, uh, Gallagher, uh, Graham would, would do something. And unfortunately, that's not what happened. And it's not going to be the tonic to these things. You can't just go ah and chuck all your strikes on there at once. Okay, yes, it did work for Bristol City, but. We're, we're, it's not all Bristol City, you know. One, one out of three really isn't it. It's not going to cut the mustard uh, for you. So, but let's 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 take a look at the stats here before I, I continue my rant. Uh, Possession-wise, we did boss it. We had 60% possession. They had 40. Uh, we also had better success with our passes, 71 uh, to their 62. We had more dribbles as well and more tackles. Uh, they had more aerial duels, it, despite the fact that's one of our strong suits. They completely outmastered us there. Um, and we had uh, three corners apiece. And again, I was licking my lips. I thought the Mulder effect would come in into into full play, but no, absolutely not. So let's. Uh, um, yeah, the goals. Chaplin, substitute, and Brown with a breakaway. Uh, that was after the, the sending off. By substitute, bad, bad boy, bro. He was only on the field for like two minutes. Got himself sent off. What was he doing? It might have been a little bit harsh uh, for him sending off. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, it depends on how you look at it. I've, I've only seen it the once, maybe twice. But yeah, Barzi truly deserved it. We deserved absolutely nothing. And if we had got anything out of this, I would have been even more embarrassed because we didn't deserve it. We didn't deserve it. For the past 180 minutes, we've been absolutely dog shit. Uh, and, and even to think, to ridiculously think that we're in a, in a playoff push, uh, you need your head checked. We need. I need my head checked because I keep I keep reiterating and think. Yeah, yeah, you know. Even though, even though today, even some of the other results were, they they kind of allow us to still believe in a way that we're in a playoff push. Let's 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 cut to the let's cut the cheese, folks. Let's cut the ch to the cheese. We are not in a playoff push. We are just we are just flirting. We are flirting. We've got we've got ambitions of playoff pushes, and but uh, realistically, the sooner that we all grasp that we're not in a playoff push, the better. Let's let, let, let let's prepare for the new season. Um, let's not go in there and get Lewis Travis injured. Let's not get Daryl Lennon injured for the new season because the new season is right on our heels. So let's maybe phase some of these boys out, give them a two two or three week break uh, because I think the new season will be coming in, in thick and fast. It might only be a couple weeks, two three weeks break uh, from the end of this season to the new season so maybe it's time to, to to prepare for that let's start resting the likes of Armstrong we don't want to overcook and we don't want to overcook Downing if he's going to stick it by Nyambi let's rest our key players forget about it and move on anyways take a look at the team that was uh, involved first and foremost the hosts uh, Walton between sticks not not our Walton they had the good Walton that's right the one who kept a clean sheet I think he's kept four clean sheets in the past eight games Williams at left back Anderson Sol Bauer at the back as well Ritzmeyer Mowat uh Somers, Somers, Gomez, Somers, Samals, 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 Williams as well, and then Palmer in the in the middle pulling the strings. Woodrow and Brune up top. Uh, no goals for Woodrow today, but a goal for Brown. How about the opposition? The shit team. That's right, Rovers. Walton between sticks. We had the shit one. That's right. Bennett at left back. It pines me to say it. Uh, Mulgrew, uh, which was I was happy to see Mulgrew. I, I, that is one good thing. I thought I, I would never see him back in the in Rover shirt. Adrobayo, Nyambi at right back. Rothwell, Johnson, and Downing in a three man midfield. Johnson. Uh, Holt being a false nine. No. Uh, Samuel on, on right as well. Let's take a look at the match ratings now. Four Rovers. I've been harsh. One with a four. Absolutely shitter. Bennett with a three. Now, he was shit for like two thirds of the game because it doesn't work. It doesn't work, Mowbray. No, and, and, and yeah, this is where we got it. We, we got it. Bennett as a person. Love it. Love the man. Easy. Ben as a player. I love him. I love him. Ben as a rover. I love him. Ben as a left back is not good. Is not good. But you gotta you, you gotta go. Let's just if I if I jumped, if I quantum leaped into Elliot Bennett's body and the Mowbray said to me, Okay, Bennett, you're captain of this team. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, you are, yep. Yeah. Um you are midfielder by trade. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I've got I've got I've got all the other positions taken up. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I need you to play at left back. But I've not played left back before in my life, uh, Gaffer. 
it doesn't matter. I need you. I need you. You're the captain of this team. I need you in this team. I'm going to stick you at left back. You're Mr. Universe. You could play anywhere in the field, even in goal, uh, with, with your arm spirit time. Behind. You would you would do that for me, wouldn't you, sir? And then, yeah, Bennett would say, because he is. He bleeds blue and white. He is Blackburn Rovers. I wouldn't say through and through. He's a bit of a journeyman, but, but you know, he is El Capitano. He's Mr. Versatile. He will play wherever he's told, and he won't, he won't say no about it. But if somebody said to me, not Quantum Leap, me, but me. And they said, look, I want you to, to go in front of these people and give them a Chinese lesson about the language of Chinese. I would say, no way, Jose, because I don't know. I don't know Chinese. I have no clue about Chinese. So I don't think I should be the one to be talking about the Chinese language. But if they ask me, go up in front of the stage and eat a big cherry pie then yes, I will do it. I will do it. I will eat the cherry pie, but I won't do the Chinese because I don't know it. You don't know left back, Elliot Bennett. So say no. Just say no to left back. You're shit at left back. You're not that great at right back either, but you, you, you can get a pass for that. I'd even I'd prefer you to be at centre back, to be honest with you. Mulgrew used to play at left back when he was a youngster. Why doesn't he play there? Why do we have any youngsters knocking on the door in the, in, in the academy, in the under 23s, under 19s or whatever? Why can't they play at left back? That is uh, one of the straws that are going to break our backs, going to break our season. And we've been playing shit against the relegation fodders. I, I, I'm, I'm, I am very nervous to see what this shambles of a team or shambles of back-to-back -back performances are going to do against the, the top-of-the-table teams, West Brom and Leeds, who are just around the corner. We could we could get tonked. We could get absolutely tonked. Or, in other words, we could get viciously bummed. Uh, anyway, uh, five for Mulgrew. Uh, Adrobaya with a four and Nyambi with a six. I can't give him any. It's default whenever you see Nyambi in, in, a, in a row, especially the right-hand side. He gets a six. I, I don't care. Yeah, you know what. Uh, Ruffle with a four. Johnson with a four. And Downing, same with him. I can't give him less than a six. Maybe a five at, at worst. Uh, Armstrong. Holtby and Samuel were just garbage. I've had shits better than, than their performances. Uh, you know what? I've had a, I had a shit this morning and it was disgusting. Possibly diarrhea. Better than your performance, I tell you that now, because it was it was lackluster. Armstrong looked like he couldn't be couldn't like I know he's got his, his, his rockets in his ass and whatever and he can he can bomb up and down the field, but he, 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 he not today. Not today. Holt being a false nine was not good. And Rothwell, playing Rothwell where he went there, that's garbage. That's a waste of talent. That's a waste of pissing talent. Realistically, hindsight is a wonderful thing. You would play downing at left back. I know he can't can't control the, the play. Not really. But he's left. He's it was. He's been a left wing back before. I've seen it in, in his middle of the days. He did play there occasionally. Downing, uh, sorry, uh, 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 Johnson, maybe Davenport to start. You know those two defensive midfield. Then you know what? Uh, you could put Bennett uh, alongside Rothwell. You know further forward. Bennett used to play on the wing back in the day. Uh, and then you can uh, maybe have Armstrong down the middle. I don't know. It, 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 this shit. Is bad and it's been bad for two games running. I don't know what he's thinking. I don't know what 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 what's got in his head over the over the reboot. This formation sucks ass. I mean, it needs to get changed. Anyway, some more stats for you coming at you. Um, here we go. Uh, we had five hundred seventy-four touches to their four-four-one. Touches mean shit in this world. Goals mean what it's all about. Uh, four hundred eight passes to their two eighty. And again, you can check out all the stats where everything went. And this guy, the stat that matter really is Gerhard Struber pulled a mastermind. He he, he outfoxed the magician that is Mobile. You got to give credit to Struber because he abandoned uh, Wolfsburg, one of probably the top two or three teams out in Austria. He could be he could have been playing uh, or managing in the Champions League next season. He could have been doing up against uh, Radenball Sport Salzburg. He could have been taking on them punks. Um, for, for the top two or three honours. But he decided, no, I'm going I'm to hand all that in. I'm going to hand that over. And I'm going to come into Barnsley for a relegation uh, dogfight in, in the second tier out in England. And since he's been here, he's been grinding out the results. And unfortunately, they're in the relegation zone. He doesn't deserve it. The team don't deserve it. They were very good, very good today. And they've been very, very good since the reboot. And, and hopefully, they'll find the, find enough points and to get themselves out of the shithole and drag one of the shit teams down like Birmingham. No, no offence. Uh, but anyway, because we played Birmingham three times and they had the better of us pretty much all three times. Um, here's a heat map. So if you heat map man just like me, all that green, nothing to be seen. That's Rover's uh, story of the day. Um, what else have I got for you? What about the gaffer? What did he have to say? Here's Tony Mowbray with his thoughts and, and wisdom, his pride of moments uh, shortly after the old uh, final whistle. Activity is similar from the weekend, I think. I think uh, we had to ride a storm in the first 15 minutes. I think we know how good Barnsley are playing through the lines and playing short, sharp, enthusiastic, bright football. And then I thought we, as we'd anticipated, we had to see that out. Um, 
And I think the next 30 minutes we dominated the game, we created chances, should have scored goals, didn't take them, um, and came in at nil-nil, which I don't think was a, a, a true reflection of the game. I think we should have been in front at half time, but we weren't clinical enough. You know, probably as, as of the weekend, really, we created more chances tonight than we did against Wigan, but didn't finish them. Um, Second half, it was a bit stodgy early on. They made they made three changes, changed formation, went to a midfield diamond and first ball in the box, the smallest man on the pitch heads it in the net and um, we're on the back foot really and we tried to react um, and yet have a sending off within a few minutes and making our changes and, and never really recovered. I don't think we really threatened on the back of that. They scored a second. It was so a similar run of... of to the weekend against Wigan, we have to be a bit more ruthless. We have to take chances as they come along because if we're in front in these games, I think we want to win them. But um, you know, there's a, a synopsis for you. That's what I think. That's how it was. But, um, ultimately, we left very disappointed. Yeah. Look at again. He's kicked the boy. I think um, that's, that's really really disappointing for the team. Of course, I think he's probably reacted to me giving him some verbal abuse so he was he wasn't strong enough in the initial challenge and uh, so it's, it's just unacceptable really for the for, for an individual to do that for the team it's uh, it's so disappointing and um and yeah I, you know I, I don't want to sit here and, and say that we lost the game because of that reason but uh, we could we lost the game because we didn't take our chances in the first half in my opinion um chances that we created and worked hard to create um you have to score goals to win football matches and goals change games and, uh, and as we found out in the last last two games you know four days ago we were a point off the playoffs and you know we've lost two games now against teams that in my opinion we should be beating and um, and you know life looks pretty difficult and tough from this point forward as we go in to play the team right at the top of the division as opposed to the team at the bottom of the division and um, yeah, let's win. See, like you never know. You never know in football. We could, we could beat, we could beat Leeds United. And uh, I, I mean, the slight defence of the team, even though there's no defence to missing the chances that we've missed over the last two games. Um, these three teams have been. I know if you look back over before the lockdown situation and after these three teams, as I study some statistics and data, have been the top three teams in the form guide over the last six, seven games. And so we've, it was, it, on paper, it was a tough a tough run of games going by the points that these three teams have accrued. The Leeds being top, we're going to second, and Barnsley were third on points accrued over the last six games. So... Uh, but so that said, we should have got points in these games. You know, in my opinion, we could have we could have won both games. We've ended up losing both games. Yeah. So what do you want me to say? It was a little dressing room. You've got a manager who's, you, you, who's um, trying to find the words, not to give them my true thoughts, um, trying to keep them good. It's another game in three days, so we have to stick together. We, you know, we're a bit depleted again tonight, but trying to be as positive as I can. I've got to take the positives from it and yet they feel the wrath of my voice regarding the unacceptable bits. You know, one ball in the box and five foot six guy heads it in our net. It's um, after we'd missed chance after chance after chance. And so, um, it's a team. we're all in it together. We win and lose together. You know, I have to take responsibility. I'm the manager. It's, uh, it's a bit frustrating because, as I said four days ago, we were a point off the playoff situation and with a real genuine chance of believing that we were going to put ourselves in that frame. And um, these two results have been, you know, hugely frustrating and disappointing for us. So yeah, garbage, 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 garbage. Not, not, not a stellar performance by Rovers this week. And in fact, the past few days have been shit. And up's next, it's Leeds. But anyway, let's take a look at what you guys are thinking out on the streets. Uh, John S P R B R uh, said, absolutely ridiculous performance. Nothing in attack and open defence. I prefer the four-two-three-one team to be more reactive and aggressive than today's shit. Uh, Marcus R T I D. He is the Swedish Rover. Embarrassing, awful performance. Total lack of killer instinct. Sickening. That's right. 
Lewis Harris said this, too many ponytails and not enough footballers. That's right. Bang on the pissing nose. Uh, Lewis Harris there. Jordan Burrows. A uh, harsh reality check from everybody is that Walton, Bennett, Brotherton, Samuel, Bell, Chapman, Gallagher, S all are never going to get us into the playoffs in a million seasons. Zero desire or belief on Saturday or today. Three month wait and the season is already over. Depressing. Rezina said it. Uh, the most black and rubbish thing to do is get bummed tonight, which we well and truly did, uh, and then absolutely tonk leads on Saturday, which we might. We, yeah, it, it could be that would be the Rovers, the most Rovers thing, uh, and that's and that, and that's that's a, a, a fine point, you know. Wigan, Barnsley, uh, uh, you know, the table shows that, that 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 we have performed better than them over the course of a season. That is true. Um, losing to those teams is not the, the complete end of the world. It's taking the points off the teams in and around the top six. And in the next three games, we are taking on three teams in that top six bracket, I believe. I think Cardiff's still in there as it stands. So to take points off of them, that's good. That's That that would be good. That would be a stronger case. And if you were to go back uh, in your DeLorean, in your, in, your, in your Dalek or whatever the heck it is, the TARDIS, and go back to Friday night, Saturday morning, uh, before kickoff on Wigan, he said, over the next five games, if we could get nine, ten points... I'll take that to the bank. So right now we've had two and we've, we've got zero. The two supposedly more, more winnable games have gone. Uh, but the next three games, our teams are up against in the top six, taking points off of them. If we were to, so what, do some miraculous... Because I've seen it, I've seen Leeds. I might not have seen the full games or, or, or you know, extensive highlights. But I've seen Leeds drop points. I've seen West Brom drop points as well over the past few games. So they may not have come out of this reboot uh, all singing and dancing like, for example, Cardiff City or, or Luton or Barnsley. Though some of those teams are, 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 are digging deep, digging deep, digging into the reserves and they're getting the results. Other teams are, are a little bit lucky, maybe a little bit fortunate to get something. Brentford look absolutely solid and thankfully we don't have to play them suckers. Um, but yeah, so hopefully maybe maybe just maybe a performance uh, which is, is due by Rovers comes around the corner and maybe it'll be against these big boys in the next three match days. Anyway, uh, Gary Barrett said, I'm totally gobsmacked with the last two games. No desire, just poor. Fred Gumpsy, he said, that was an ill-disciplined, desperate second-half performance from Rovers. Defence looking distinctly uncomfortable and next to nothing up front. At first sight, the sending off looked harsh, but proved to be the correct decision. Jan Bellamy says, in other news, are we allowed to put this false number nine bollocks officially in the bin, please? Yes, please. Uh, Rishi Shishka said, two games in a row, comfortable possession for the majority, create one or two chances don't take them concede a goal and go to absolute shit against relegation battle teams they want it more than us son they do Chris Mar said I said on Saturday the defeat at Wigan summed up our season I was wrong this does absolutely feckin awful Rovers Rovers chat said nice of Rovers to not bother with a trip to Wembley when the fans can't be there that's the positive spirit for it and having said that false nine it works elsewhere it doesn't work here get in the sea to drift get in the sea to drift with the public urine and discarded plastic that's right and then into the final few here Tom Scofford said Remember when we battered Bristol City and got excited? I did, but it all went uh, sour to shit after that. Sh uh, Sean Fox said this, aka the American Rover, a red card for that. Are you kidding me? He said. And brfcs.com said, pathetic from Brereton and a massive overreaction from the referee. That was in regards to the red card, of course. And of course, me on Maka Russell Frost, who is a Barnsley fan. And he is a, a patron, support the channel, as he does. Uh, respect to him. He uh, gave me a blow-by-blow -blow commentary throughout the 90. Of course, he was he was, he was was saying it with a smirk, I know. The game turned when Barnsley changed formation and brought Chaplin on. The quadruple substitution didn't have much impact. Then the harsh red card for Brereton compacted the situation. Barnsley played better second half and took advantage of it. Yes, you're pissing well did. Now, how about the uh, rest of the games that took place? Millwall, Swansea. Uh, again, those two teams competed for top six. Couldn't take advantage of it. Just a point apiece. Uh, Cardiff and Charlton, two alternative agendas as well. Cardiff uh, in the top six. Charlton uh, competed for the old getting out of the old relegation situation. Again, a point apiece. No one could take advantage. One team that did take advantage was Brentford. They smashed Reading 3-0 in the end. Same can be said for Fulham, but a little bit late, but they got there in the end. 2-1 win over QPR in the old London affair. Leeds and Luton, though, duked out to a 1-1 draw again. A point for Luton down the bottom and a point for Leeds at the top. Not great for either of two teams. And Wigan smashed them again. They bombed Stoke City. That's right. Bumming all round. Uh, 
<laughs> situation in the table. Leeds lead the way. Four points clear of West Brom, who have a game in hand. Uh, they'll be taking on Sheffield Wednesday tomorrow. Uh, Brentford, the biggest movers, up to third, st- uh, or still remaining third, 69 points on the ball. Fulham are not far behind as well, two points adrift. Forrest got a game in hand as well. They could go above Fulham as well, depending on goal difference and all that kind of jazz. And then there's a bit of a gap again uh, from sixth all the way down to 12th. That's right, that's the moment. That's the, st- the teams that are still mathematically in. Uh, you would say Luton, Barnsley and Huddersfield are going down as it stands. But look at it. Look at it. Just look at it, will you? I said look at it. Uh, a win for Huddersfield tomorrow. I want a win for Hull. And it's Stoke would go into the relegation zone. Or Middlesbrough, depending on... No, it will be Stoke. It will be Stoke. Um, so, yeah, anyone. Anyone between, I don't know, from 24th, possibly even up to 16th. I mean, I think Wigan are out now. I think, they, I think they've done enough. I think they've done enough. Anyway, what is going to go on tomorrow? Uh, Preston against uh, Derby. Of course, uh, both looking up at the moment in those t- towards them top six spots. Not in Forest against Bristol City. Both of those two teams are looking up as well. Birmingham against Huddersfield. You could say but Birmingham is safe. You would say Huddersfield definitely not safe. They're still in the thick of things. Sheffield Wednesday against West Brom as well. Again, Sheffield Wednesday in, in no man's land. West Brom trying to get themselves automatics. Hull and Middlesbrough again, both battling uh, at the bottom for six pointers and all that kind of jazz. Uh, and then we have the next match day with Rovers and Co. Charlton against Millwall on Friday. Derby against Forest. Stoke against Barnsley. Brighton against Wigan. Luton against Reading. Huddersfield against Preston. Fulham against Birmingham. Uh, Bristol City against Cardiff today. Uh, I mean, Rovers up against Leeds. That is the game of the weekend. Chef Wednesday will take on Swansea away. Middlesbrough against QPR and West Brom against Hull. Of course, today's opponents, Barnsley, but Stoke. I did say it. Um, but that is that. That is that. Yes. Embarrassing. Disgusting. I am disgraced. <laughs> With the performance, Tony Mowbray, even the guy, even Eva Knievel or whatever his name is from Toy Story 4 is livid with you. Absolutely livid. We need a performance. We need a, a, a resolution to this because either either you step it up the next game, two games, or concede defeat and just say, you know what, forget about it. Let's move on to the next season. Give the kids a chance. Give the, you know, give these other guys a rest. Because this season will end abruptly and then the new season will be right around the corner as well and you're going to be ready to, to roll with it and, and and if you burn these kids out the Travises, the Lenahans, the, the Amari Bells and Nyambis and co uh, we're going to be left threadbare once again and it can be and, and we'll, we'll start the new season in shit form just like we're ending this season at the moment in shit form but uh, a week in football is a crazy old thing and a week in football in the Covid era is a crazy old thing this time next week we would have played another two games uh, and we could be all smiles again. That's right. It's just a funny old thing, is football. Uh, but right now, I'm livid. Absolutely livid. Tomorrow, I'll be doing a preview on the Leeds game, and then we'll be looking forward to doing the match predictions for uh, those this this coming weekend as well. So be sure to stick around. If you are new to the channel, make sure you give the video a subscribe, tickle that subscribe button, and also tickle the bell so you know when I'm going live, which I might go live on Thursday with Premier League predictions, and I might even go live tomorrow with Championship, championship predictions. Also, give the video some love. Smash that thumbs up. If you if you thought Rovers' performance was shit, then give a thumbs up. If you like Barnsley, Struber, you think he's a quality manager, give this a thumbs up. Um, if you think uh, if you think Ben Brereton got a red card yesterday, give it a thumbs up. That's right. So keep getting them thumbs up coming uh, to give the channel a love and all that kind of stuff. And if you want to support the channel in another way, besides your viewership and your subscriptions and all that, you know what? You could become a Patreon, boys and girls. You could become best friends for life. There is a link down below in the old description. Uh, Patreon.com forward slash Roverseas. Check it out. Uh, perks and privileges and all that kind of jazz. And I'll be revamping those perks and privileges uh, next season. So you could be first in line uh, to all that. And you could be number 10 and uh, number 11. Number 11 for the for the Blackburn Overseas team, dream team. That's right. We're just one shy from an 11. Can you be it? Uh, check it out in the old description. Anyway, I'm going to go lie down. It's been a long day. I actually recorded this review, a preview twice, tw- a review twice because of bad audio. I hate bad audio. Anyway, until I see you all again, stay f- safe out there, wear masks, six feet distance and all the kind of jazz and I'll see you all next time around. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share and most importantly, hit the subscribe button to keep you bang up to date. With all things Blackburn Rovers related, championship related, Football related. We've got it all covered right under one roof. And while I still have you, please be sure to check out some of the old videos scattered along here. I hope. <laughs>